Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 810 WHB TV. I'm Schaefer Shoots, joined by Jim Bly, who's going to be running the camera, directing the show, and doing color commentary. We're here at Park Hill South High School, home of the Panthers, where the Panthers will be hosting the Indians of St. Joe Central. The Indians are standing at 3 and 12 right now, and they'll be playing against the Panthers, who are 13 and 4. A little bit of uh, of interconference basketball for you this evening. Should be a good matchup. The Panthers have been doing a very good job shooting this year. Their field goal percentage, as of right now, is 63 percent. From the free throw line, they've been Proved tremendously, also sitting at 63%. The Panthers struggled earlier on in the season, closing games out, having good free throw shooting down the stretch. We saw that flip right in the middle of the season. The turning point, I'd say, was the North Kansas City tournament where the Panthers were able to turn it on, take first in that tournament, come out of there. They beat their crosstown rival, the Park Hill Trojans, and recently just beat the powerhouse Lee Summit West Titans in a very nice game here at Park Hill South. The Panthers will be playing, as I said earlier, the Indians of St. Joe Central tonight. This game was scheduled for last Tuesday, but due to the inclement weather, was rescheduled for this evening. After tonight, the Panthers will move on to play Truman tomorrow. That game will also be broadcast here on 810 WHB TV. Not only are the boys playing, the girls are playing right before that. Both games will be broadcast here. And on Friday, the Panthers will be playing the crosstown rival, the Park Hill Trojans. Trojans trying to get a little, little bit of uh, revenge after the Panthers beat them on their home floor on the 28th of January, not too long ago. I believe we have Jim with us now. Jim? Yeah, I tried to get your athletic director, John Carr, to come up here and do a uh, color commentary for you tonight. Uh, not, not, not one for the mic, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, a nice guy. Glad to have him come up. He came up and gave us some good information. And always nice to see the AD uh, working uh, with the broadca broadcast crew. Uh, uh, tomorrow night we'll, we, we will be broadcasting the boys' and girls' games live on 810WHB-TV. Uh, Friday, I don't know if we'll be able to or not. Uh, we may not have a person to broadcast both. I know we have somebody to do the Park Hill, Park Hill South boys game, so we for surely will be doing that. Maybe if uh, we can't bring you the uh, live audio commentary, we can bring you video of the girls game on Friday night. Looking forward to That was a very close game the last time those teams met up. Park Hill South was a very close game. Fortunately, the Panthers were able to pull away a little bit towards the end and keep that that lead towards the end. We mentioned that now the Panthers had a tough time closing games out towards the beginning of the season. Just recently have they been able to close games out per se. There was a heartbreaker loss early to Liberty North in the Liberty North Invitational that should have been a win for the Panthers as well as a Blue Springs South loss where the Panthers were up by double digits at one point. Blue Springs South went on a monster run in the third quarter and was able to take the Panthers down and lastly the heartbreaker here at home Liberty High School hitting a bank shot three to send the game into overtime and then a buzzer beater three to win the game their first lead of the game happened when time ran out you know Shaver this is I mean every game I've broadcast it has been a good tight close game this is a pretty tough conference uh, that that Park Hill is, South is in and uh, that will only help them out in postseason play uh, guys will get older because of being able to learn how to step up and play great basketball. Absolutely. You mentioned how good of a conference this is. Lee Summit West, known around the state for all of their athletic programs, football, basketball, baseball, basketball especially, multiple great athletes. Right now ranked, they were ranked second in the state until the Panthers dethroned them. I believe they dropped only one or two spots. Still a very good basketball program. St. Joe Central, they will be playing this evening. Not as great of a basketball program. We're a good team last year. Actually beat the Panthers in the district championship last year. Double overtime loss. Tough loss, I know, for the Panthers and Coach Zeke. Park Hill, another great team who they'll be playing this week. Ruskin beat the Panthers here last year um, for their courtroom game. Luckily, the Panthers were able to win at Ruskin. And Truman 
always a good program. The Panthers beat them in the North Kansas City tournament this year, but that'll be a fun one to watch for sure. Truman has a lot of very talented athletes, and that should be a good one to watch. You, uh, you know, it's uh, definitely... Well, I think we're going to go ahead and go to commercial break here, and we'll be back uh, after these fine words from our sponsors. Just like your hometown team, City Rental Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe, south of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169. City Rental Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. All service, fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service, we're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB TV at PVSKC.com. PVSKC.com. Welcome back to 810 WHB TV. Again, I'm Schaefer Schutz, joined by Jim Bly. And I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the starting lineups for the Indians. The six foot sophomore forward, number three, Arnez Stillman. Number four, Tanner Curtin, the 5'9 sophomore guard. Number 14, Jake Hill, the 5'10 sophomore guard. Number 25, Derek Gray. Gave the Panthers problems last year, the 5'11 senior guard. He's one to watch. Number 40, Kyle Fox, the 5'11 senior forward. And if you didn't notice going through that lineup, the Indians have one player hitting the six-foot mark in their starting lineup. And you can go ahead and compare that to the Panthers' starting lineup. Mitch Henderson, point guard, the junior, six feet tall. Peyton Meek, the two guard, the senior, 6'5". Ryan Welty, the sophomore forward, 6'6". Evan Hines, the center, and the senior, also 6'6". And Hudson Welty, the senior forward, 6'4". So you can already tell there is a, a very large difference in size between these two teams. The Panthers have been able to use that to their advantage so far this season. They are bigger than most teams they play. I've never seen such a big margin as there is tonight. Well, and you know that's uh, that's definitely a team of uh, of their caliber. Uh, St. Joe Central is going to have to definitely count on speed and outside shooting. And if you don't have your outside shooting hit, and it's not you're not going to do very well in a basketball game with that size differential. St. Joe Central somehow able to come up with a tip. Kyle Fox, the 5'11 senior, going up against Hines, the 6'6 senior. Didn't see that one coming. Indians with possession. The Panthers are in that 3-2 zone that we see so much of. Quick outside shot by Gray off the mark. Hines with the rebound. Finds Henderson coming down the near sideline. Back to Hines, over to Meek, to Welty, to Henderson. Inside, 
to the other Welty. Gets denied by the bottom of the backboard. St. Joe Central on the move. Gray pulls it up. Trying to find something to set up in this, this Panthers zone. Teams have had a hard time penetrating this zone. We saw Lee Summit West having a very difficult time a couple nights ago. We'll see what the Indians can do. Quick three there. Not going to fall. Ryan Welty with the rebound finds Henderson. Henderson over to Hines to Meek. Looking inside for his buddy Hudson. Doesn't like it. Cross court pass to the little Welty. Ryan into his brother. And then Meek ends up with it for a three from the wing. Not going to fall. Indians with the rebound. Gray bringing the ball down the floor. Well, it's a perfect example of high low offense. They worked it, worked it inside several times and back out. And then finally Peyton Meek was open on the wing. Meek a very good three-point shooter here. He's established himself as that. Hit four threes the other night against Lee Summit West. Not off to a too hot of a start, but I would expect to see that change. He didn't have that many opportunities the other night either. So, I mean, for, to get four, he did quite well. Meek has made 23 three-point shots so far this season, the most on the team. I think he holds some kind of, or close to holding a state level this year, this year or last year, wasn't it? He might be getting close. He definitely has a very good outside shot. Or I think it might be Park Hill history is what it is. Leading three-point shooter here. Right there we saw him hit a two. That puts the score two to three. St. Joe Central in the lead after the three-point shot by Derek Gray in the corner. That is something the three-two zone gives up is the shot in the corner. I would expect to see the Panthers shift around a little bit from the 3-2 to the 2-3. Not a whole lot of man. Panthers on the move after the steal by Ryan Welty. Meek goes up, gets fouled. Slow getting up to his feet. He's going to make his way to the free throw line. This has been one of the areas this year that Park Hill South, one of the few areas that has uh, kind of hurt them down the stretch. Three throw line. Absolutely it has. We saw that very early in the season. The Panthers usually are a very good free throw shooting team. Struggled early. We have seen that change a little bit. Peyton Meek, a very good free throw shooter. Shooting just 70%. And then makes both of them. Gets both of his free throws. Meek extending the zone a bit. Panthers are trying to trap. Here to change the defense up a little bit. As you see a block from Evan Hines. Welty over to Meek. Meek cross court to the little Welty to Mitch. Trying to set things up. Henderson. Hines with the ball in the short corner. Tries to go across the court to Ryan Welty. Just hits the net. Not able to get it there with enough velocity. And the Indians do end up with the ball. Hill trying to set something up. I believe the Indians are putting the ball on the ground a little bit too much against the zone. and need to see a little bit more passing going on for them to be able to affect, get, get through this zone. We have seen quite a few outside shots as we see one there. It's not going to fall, but they do get the offensive board. Awkward looking jump shot there, but that wasn't able to fall. The Panthers end up with the ball. And a foul, foul, foul underneath, yes. Ball. That is the first foul on number 40, Kyle Fox, the senior forward. Henderson bringing the ball up the floor. Trying to set up an offense. Welty has it in the corner. He finds Hines inside who hits the inside shot and gets fouled. He'll be headed to the line. Another very good free throw shooter for the Panthers. I'm sure Actually that, leads uh, the team in percentage at 75%. I'm sure that's pretty much their game plan all night is to, to get it down low and to, into uh, the hands of uh, Evan Hines. There definitely is a height difference between Hines and the man guarding him. Ryan Welty able to get the rebound and the putback there after the missed free throw from Hines. 
little slow start for Park Hill South, but just came back in and leading the game 8-3 to three right now with 3.50 left in the first quarter. Panthers have gone into a man defense. Don't see that very often from them. Usually try to utilize their size in the zone. But they've stepped out. They want to see what St. Joe can do. Well, the thing was, like you said a few minutes ago, that the, most of the shots coming for uh, Central were from the perimeter. And I think the coach decided to switch it up to put a stop to that a little bit. Meek for three. Again, not able to hit. Hudson with the offensive board. Henderson to Ryan. Great pass, great shot. There's two for the Panthers. 10 to three with 3.13 left in the first quarter. Panthers are in the lead. Timeout St. Joe Central. And great vision there by Henderson finding the little Welty coming back door and a great finish by Ryan. We'll go ahead and take a 30 uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and stay here during this break. That was a quick, probably be a quick timeout. So. Um, St. Joe Central trying to stop the, the momentum Park Hill South has acquired over the last couple of minutes. I wonder uh, how long uh, Coach Zeke will keep uh, Park Hill South in the man offense. Uh, like you said, uh, St. Joe Central is a quite, uh, quite a bit shorter stature team than uh, the Panthers tonight. So changing up to... Uh, now Central does have a 6'3 senior forward, Tyree Mayfield, on the roster. A very good football player for St. Joe Central. I believe he did get hurt and is unable to play in this game. He would definitely make a difference height-wise for the Indians. Unfortunately, they are without him and having to make do with, with the size that they have. The Indians with the ball now. Indians already with uh, three quick fouls in this first quarter, so that'll play a part, a, an important factor in this game as well. Definitely will. We saw that against Lee Summit West. Multiple players for Lee Summit West getting in foul trouble early, having to leave the ball game. I'm going to take time to thank the Panther Booster, Booster Club uh, for bringing you this broadcast. Indians slow it down. Three by Gray off the mark. Welty with the rebound. Henderson moving up the floor quickly. Finds Meek for a transition three. Decides not to take the shot. Henderson looks inside the lane who hits the shot. He's headed to the line as well. Great job there by Robert Lane. There you see a sneak peek of the strength of number 23 for the Panthers. Incredible strength. Very good feet. Very good agility for a big guy. He is one to watch. This is, what, the third old-fashioned three-point uh, play here tonight? Is this second or third? I think there's been more than one for sure. And Robert Lane's able to complete that three-point play after he hits his free throw. Robert, one that was struggling a lot early in the season from the free throw line, has improved tremendously as the season has gone on, turned himself into a pretty good free throw shooter. You see Henderson with a steal. He's going to take it himself. He gets fouled. He's headed to the line. Henderson now with 20 steals. Second on the team. He's headed to the line. You were, t you were talking about Robert Lane, as you recall, early on in the uh, first half against the Lee, uh, Lee Summit West. Uh, nothing was seeming to go his way, but as the uh, fourth quarter came around, everything was going down for him, it seemed like. Absolutely. He struggled finishing early in the game. Um, towards, as the game went on, he improved underneath the basket. Very physical, very tough player underneath. We saw him move quite a bit. Got down the floor first a few times, actually. As you see him get a strong rebound there, he loses it. His buddy Hyatt picks it up and gets the bucket. Allen Hyatt, very good basketball player for the Panthers. Very fundamentally sound, good post, good post moves, and very good touch. St. Joe Central, again, trying to find find a way to get through this zone. The Panthers have gone back to the 3-2 zone. Looks like they got a couple posts inside trying to do something, but the, the long arms of the Panthers are making it very difficult to get anything inside. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to open it up by making some threes if they are going to get inside. And uh, as you can see, uh, Park Hill South went back to the zone coverage again. 
Henderson again with the steal doesn't finish St. Joe's Central ball. Coach Zeke over there coaching still, always coaching. Got a 15 to three lead, but still teaching. This is a great time to actually do some teaching. These games like this where you'd like to make some of those coaching points. Henderson almost with a third steal of the night. He does get his hand on that one. Panthers aren't gonna end up with it. Three point shot, not gonna hit it. Meek with the rebound. Henderson moving down the floor quickly. That is one thing he brings to the table, moving the ball down the floor very quickly. Welty ends up with the ball, takes a shot. Doesn't get a piece of the rim. Gray with a out of control jump shot in transition. Yep. Doesn't fall for him. Just saw Coach Zeke tell him to slow it down a little bit. There was no reason to take that, force that shot underneath. There was nothing there. Uh, the defense had all uh, converged down low, and there was so much outside stuff open at that point. Panthers appear to be trying to hold the ball, get the last shot of the quarter. There is 20 seconds left in this quarter. The Panthers are leading 15 to three. On pace to have another 60 point night like we had the other night against Lee Summit West. Meek for three, and, and he hits that one. Great shot there by the senior guard. Half court shot, almost banked in. We're not going to see any of that magic tonight. The Panthers have increased their lead 18 to three going into the second quarter. After the three point shot by Meek. The Panthers have three players shooting 50% or better from behind the arc. And I believe after I say that, we are gonna take a quick break and hear a bit from our sponsors. Just like your hometown, City Rental Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169. City Rental Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. All service, fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service, we're here for you. Welcome back to Park Hill South High School. You're watching 810 WHB TV. I'm Schaefer Schutz, joined by Jim Bly. And we're here where it already appears to be a blowout for the Panthers. It is 18 to 3 at the start of the second quarter. Yeah, and you know, a lot of those points came from the three throw line. Uh, there was a, a St. Joe Central has five fouls on him in the first quarter to uh, Panthers 1. Panthers did do a very good job of hitting their free throws in the first quarter. Able to capitalize on some of those fouls. The Panthers do appear to have moved into the 2 3 zone that we thought we'd see a little bit of tonight as the Indians turn the ball over. Wild pass over into the stands on the our side. And, uh, this, you know, this is a tough game for a coach because if, if with, a, with a shorter height team, if, you, if you're not hitting from the outside, you, you can't ever get the inside open enough with the height that, and the size that Park Hill South has down low. Absolutely, does make it very difficult. Good ball movement by uh, the Panthers, working around the Horden, and then gets Meek open for three, and misses. Cultiflider with the rebound, a senior guard here at Park Hill South, just checked into the ball game. Meek over to Cultiflider to Hyatt. Welty ends up with it in the short corner, back to Hines. Hines with a mid-range jumper, doesn't fall. Hyatt gets his hand on it, but the Panthers will not regain and control Indians' ball. You know, re regardless whether they made that or not, two, two uh, great possessions down on the offensive end of the court for the Panthers, uh, being able to practice some, some ball movement before they get into uh, district and, and postseason play uh, 
to be, you know, and that's where you got to use these games like this to, to really work on some things that maybe you haven't been going well for you. Put them in play and let them uh, uh, actually practice them in live in a live game. Absolutely, I know the Panthers are hoping to make a state playoff run. Districts, however, starts March third, and that will be at Staley High School. Indians with a quick two. I believe that was Fox. It was Kyle Fox. Panthers back with the ball. Welty inside to Hines. To Meek. Over to Cultifighter for three. He's a sharp shooter and he hits it from the corner. Great shot there by the senior guard. Panthers are leading 21 to 5 with 550 left in the second quarter. Little with the ball. He looks inside. Fox with another outside shot. Good shot there by the senior forward for St. Joe. Welty tries to answer back. Doesn't hit. Hyatt gets fouled on his way down with the rebound. You may see a switch up in the defensive scheme here after those two back-to-back -back outside shots by the, the, Indian, the Indians of St. Joe Central. I would not be surprised if we did see that. It's a good game to work in some of your younger players that haven't seen as a lot of time that you might need down the stretch because of the close physical games that you can sometimes get into foul trouble in. Definitely could be a very good learning experience for multiple players. Panthers with the ball. Call the fighter, looks inside, doesn't like what he sees. Gets the ball again, finds Lane inside. Oh, great, great move. move, great move. Good soft hands, which we didn't see him have in that first quarter. That one hung around the rim and went on in. Great touch there by the senior post, Robert Lane, as he settles back into the middle of that 2-3 defense. He's somebody you want to see get a lot of touches towards the tail end of the season because he can be a very big factor in the postseason play with his, with his height and his wide body size. There we see him getting a steal, playing a little bit of defense. He gets the ball again inside the paint. Not able to finish on that one. St. Joe on the move. A little too hard off the glass. Fox for three. We've seen him hit outside. I believe that is his third outside shot in the last couple of minutes. Hines with the ball at the top of the key, finds Welty to Henderson. Henderson over to Cultiflider on the wing. Cultiflider to Hines. Cultiflider again, he finds Robert inside. Robert's in a tough position. He's got people all over him. He's gonna a get call. a lane violation there. Three seconds. And, uh, you know, it's really good, but still good fundamental basketball. Uh, they just kind of got overloaded down low and and Hines got stuck with it. Panthers have gone back to their 3-2, it appears. As Fox takes a shot, it blew the ball, did get tipped. Henderson on the move, finds Ryan. That's a travel. Ball was placed a little bit behind him. Tough ball to catch and score. Ryan does get called for the travel. St. Joe Central with the ball. Hill bringing the ball down the floor for the Indians. He tries to, to gouge this defense. He gets cut off. Indians still dancing around the outside. Gray for three. Doesn't hit. Henderson gets the rebound himself. He's moving the ball down the floor. Wealthy inside the lane. He's going to take that shot. And he gets fouled. He will be headed to the line after he made that basket. His second and one of the night. We'll see if he can capitalize on this one as well as he did earlier in the evening. And he does. And you know, they are getting it down low to him a lot more tonight, it seems like, uh, than, than they were last night. And I wonder if they're trying to work on something. Maybe they are. I know that he had a lot of looks against um, Lee Summer West. Wasn't able to finish. Maybe they are trying to help him out, find his shot a little bit, because he definitely is a big body underneath that could help the Panthers out tremendously as he gets the ball again, turns around, doesn't hit that one. The Indians with the rebound. Gray moving the ball down the floor quickly. Almost loses it. He oh, almost lost it. Not quite. Fox for three, and it rims out. 
Henderson over to Welty. Welty takes the shot. A block called. Very close one indeed. That foul will be called on Zach Olson, the 5'11 senior forward. Welty at the free throw line. Welty typically a good free throw shooter. The percentages of the Park Hill South basketball team free throw shooting wise have suffered from the first half of the season. If you were to just take this second half, I believe um, they would be a lot better. Hudson is shooting 63% right now from the line. I'd yeah. say the last half of the year, he's at least 75%. Definitely uh, something the Indians will have to work on in the second half is uh, staying out of foul trouble. The team, team fouls in the first uh, two quarters so, so far is eight fouls on them with one to the Panthers. Definitely one-sided there. The Panthers doing a good job of staying out of foul trouble. Meat gets the ball in the corner for three. Doesn't hit it. Hines gets the offensive rebound, and it gets stolen as he tries to pass to Henderson. Hill with a good move. On his way to the basket, Meek gets a quick inbound to Henderson who brings the ball down quickly. Hines with the ball inside the paint, finds his buddy Hudson who got fouled. That is the ninth team foul for the Indians. Welty will be headed to the line. How else do you stop that down low if you don't have the size? I mean, that's that's why uh, that's why this the Indians will be in foul trouble throughout this game because they keep going down low and taking advantage of their size. and. Now nine team fouls on the uh, St. Joe Central Indians. That does appear to be the case. I know, me personally, if I was going up against one of these giants, I'd just be, I'd be hacking, or hacking at them all night as well, which is what the Indians have been doing so far. That free throw. The Panthers are in the lead 30 to 12 with 157 left in the half. I believe the Panthers are gonna get their second team foul. That's on Henderson. Henderson and Welty trying to get a trap. Allen Hyatt comes in for uh, for Evan Hines. Good passing there by the Indians. 152 left in the second quarter. Are we going to have any entertainment tonight? I don't think so. I think the Southside girls are, are taking the night off. Maybe we can get the Rage Kays to do something special for us. <laughs> Definitely a possibility. Henderson has the ball at the top of the key. Over to Ryan, inside to Hyatt. Meek looks inside, he finds Hudson Welty, who goes up for no call. That could have been easily called for a little contact underneath, but at this point, I'm sure they're gonna loosen up how they call this game a little bit. I'd agree with that, especially with how one-sided the game is this early. Colt of Flyer brings the ball out. Pitches the ball right in front of him to Hyatt for a turnaround jumper. Doesn't hit it. Hudson, great effort on getting that offensive rebound. Colt the Flyter ends up with it. Welty inside to his brother Hudson. Goes up strong for an easy two. That's 32-12 with a minute 15 left in the half. Gray bringing the ball down the floor for the Indians. The Panthers have extended their zone a bit into a box and one look. Welty coming out up top. Gets the ball. Hyatt bringing the ball down the floor there for a second. It's not something you see very often. Ryan Welty to Meek in the corner. Meek looking cross court, hits the rim. Gray on the move. Great shot there by the senior guard. He'll be headed to the free throw line. He got two plus maybe one in that drive, and that's uh, what turnovers will do for uh, somebody that's lacking in size. I mean, their quickness will take over and be able to get to the other end and cause the defensive uh, team to have to overreact and, and foul. Absolutely, as we saw it there. Lane 
checking into the ball game for Hudson Welty. The Indians are pressing. They get a hand on it. That was number three, Arnez Stillman. And uh, I'm sure the Indians will probably come out after half in a press, full court press, with the score 32 to 15. They hope to get back in if they will need to. Robert Lane with the ball in the open court. Misses the layup. Thankfully, Ryan Welty was there to save the day. Picks up an easy two. There is 20 seconds left in the half. Panthers lead 34-15. The Indians looking, looking to get the last shot here. Panthers have settled back into their 2-3 zone. Caught the flutter getting a hand out. Able to get the ball inside the paint. Lane fouls. Stillman will be headed to the line with 2.5 left. That foul will be on number 23, 23, Robert Lane. That would be his first personal. Fourth team foul. Stillman misses his first free throw. Still with a chance to hit the second one. Hits that one. Panthers get the ball and quickly meet moving down the floor. He's going to take a quick shot. Doesn't get it off. Ball was stripped away from him right before he tried to pull it up. At half, the score is 34-16. The Panthers are in the lead. Yeah, well, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go to break here, come back uh, after these fine words from our sponsors with some uh, halftime stats and uh, player information for you. And uh, thanks for tuning in to A10WHB-TV. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB TV at pbskc.com. pbskc.com. Just like your hometown team, City Rental Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169, City Rental Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. All service, fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service, we're here for you. Three. Welcome back to 810 WHB TV. I'm Schaefer Schutz, joined by Jim Bly. Jim is actually taking a potty break real fast. He'll be back. Even, even the great Jim Bly needs to go to the bathroom every once in a while. We do have leading scores so far. 
this game for the Panthers. Robert Lane is the leading scorer with eight. Meek right behind him with seven. Both Welty brothers sitting with six. And the Panthers only with four team fouls in the first half. Henderson with two of those. He's the only Panther in any kind of foul trouble. Panthers have done a very good job of dominating this first half offensively and defensively. The length of the Panthers has proven to be a little bit too much for the Indians offense. They've gotten hot a little bit shooting from the outside, um, but they are having a very tough time penetrating the zone of the Panthers. The Panthers have been sitting in that 3-2 we've seen so much of this year. Switching it up a little bit going into the 2-3, then extending it out to more of a um, kind of a 1-3-1, maybe boxing one look. And the Indians having a tough time with that. We actually did see the Panthers go into man there for a little bit. We don't see them do that too often. St. Joe trying to get the ball in transition, moving down the floor quickly. I know Gray has taken a lot of shots, able to hit a couple of them underneath. He's taken a lot of outside shots, also a lot in transition. He is a very good athlete. We saw him hurt the Panthers a little bit last year, especially in that, that district championship that was such a heartbreaker here at Park Hill South, a double overtime loss. I don't believe anybody saw that one coming. Panthers with a very good team last year. Um, shocked a lot of the community. And I know Coach Zeke, as well as many of the players, wanted to come out this season and, and get rid of the reputation of taking second in so many things. We've mentioned earlier the Panthers taking second in conference and district and in the William Jewell tournament as well as the North Kansas City tournament. That already has changed a bit this year. The Panthers did take second in the William Jewell Tournament and the Liberty North Invitational. However, they did win the North Kansas City Tournament not too long ago. The first Park Hill South team to do so. And right now they are sitting in first in district play and are tied for first in conference play. It's been a fun ride so far this year, Schaefer. Uh, Tuesday night we'll be here doing the uh, girls and boys game against Truman. Friday night, you'll be on TV. We're going to lose you on our Friday night oh, yeah. broadcast. Uh, uh, Rod Tompkins will be taking over. He did the summer tournament this uh, past summer, and a little bit warmer back then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But it looks like well, we may have some warm temperatures coming up here by the end of the week. Hopefully melt some of the snow, and then we'll probably just get another one. But I sure hope it warms up a little bit. I'm having a, I'm having a tough time. With this weather as it is right now, we just got a foot of snow here in Kansas City, making it difficult to get around. Then it started snowing a little bit on Sunday. Freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't want another uh, snowmageddon to happen. No, uh, I told you last time during the broadcast that we have a big hill, and uh, the kids uh, actually made a sledding slope down our stair stair uh, stairs down to the street. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> about a... 30-foot run, oh. but, and, uh, but yeah, so, well, back to basketball, uh, I expect to see uh, the St. Joe uh, Central Indians come back out and impress in the second half, trying to get back in this game, it's 34-16, to 16. it'll be tough for them to do, uh, gotten a little bit of foul trouble in the first half, if they can uh, keep from letting uh, Park Hill South Panthers uh, make uh, go trips to the line, they, they you know, in get a few trips and a few more three-pointers, they could get back in this game doubtful, but they could. It could happen. I've seen it happen before in sports, but uh, what are your thoughts? What do you think uh, the uh, the Indians uh, need to do in the realm of change in the second well, half? I think the Indians are going to have to utilize um, their size, hopefully a little bit of speed, see a little more quickness out of them. I also believe they're going to have to go into a press if they hope to make up this much of a margin in the second half. We saw them press a little bit earlier I think they're going to have to continue that if they hope to get back in this game you also did mention them getting into foul trouble I believe they had nine, was it nine, nine or ten fouls in the first half they're going to need to cut that down dramatically if they hope to get back in this ball game and the Panthers are shooting free throws very well they've been capitalizing on the fouls not only are the Indians going to have to change for the Indians to get back in it the Panthers are going to have to not play as well not shoot as well for St. Joe to get back into this ball game. Well, and the one thing about uh, Coach Zeke and the St. Uh, uh, Park Hill South team is uh, 
they do handle the press very well. They they handled it real well the other night against uh, Lee Summit West. When you know, and the way to break the press is over the top and uh, passing, and, uh, and that that'll be the hard thing for uh, St. Joe to uh, to do if they do come out in the press is uh, try and stop the the passes overhead. Absolutely, will be a tough tough comeback for them and and. Also for the Panthers, I mentioned earlier, there's, there's two teams that come out for the Panthers in the second half. It's the team that plays very well in the second half and the team that just can't finish. And we'll see which one we get this evening. Lately, it has been the Panthers who play very well in the second half. And it seemed to be a trend the last six games. The Panthers have won six straight, dating all the way back to the North Kansas City Tournament. January 24th was the championship game for that. And they've been, they've been hot ever since. A couple games have been canceled due to the inclement weather. We were talking a little bit about that earlier. This game actually was scheduled for last Tuesday. We should be getting overtime pay this week. <laughs> yeah. Three, uh, three high school games in one week. And uh, uh, I guess uh, next Monday or Tuesday's makeup game will be like at 3 or 4 in the afternoon. So oh, man. I was talking to Coach Z about that earlier. So it will be an early game for these guys. Uh, hmm. Be getting out of school probably early. And I believe that is the game that was scheduled for Friday at Ruskin. Right, exactly, because they, they had no school that day. Mm -hmm. Ruskin and was, um, their school was canceled. Here in the Park Hill School District, we did have school. Must have been a little, the roads must have been a little worse out there. Well, um, you guys over here at Park Hill South are just tough. Yeah. And good, <laughs> and your kids are good drivers, so yeah. they weren't well, too worried about, about that. Well, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know what kind of drivers they're. They're, they're watching. <laughs> so I can think of a few that aren't the greatest. Possession arrow goes with St. Joe Central to begin the uh, third uh, quarter in the second half, beginning of the second half. Tanner Curtin inbounding the ball to Hill. Henderson guarding him closely, trying to push him left. Hill's able to get right on him. The Panthers appear to be in a man defense. Switching it up a little bit, trying to challenge the Indians. Henderson guarding Hill closely. Hill's able to get that one to fall just inside the paint. Well, that's a good way to start off the second half is uh, put some points up on the board. Meek with the ball on the wing. Gets it back up to Henderson at the top of the key. Meek to Welty. Over to his brother, Ryan Welty. To Henderson inside to Hudson. Going in with his right, he is left-handed. He shot that one with his right, got fouled, made it. He's heading to the line. He just split the D there. That's all he did. They they gave it to him high and and went right to the hoop in between the two defensive players. And uh, you know it's going to be a tough game for St. Joe Central tonight. Nice pass there inside. A great job finishing. Wasn't able to finish the free throw, however, as St. Joe Central turns the ball over. On this side of the floor, Meek bringing it down. Finds Ryan looking inside just a little bit too far for Hines. Fox with the steal. Hill, strong move to the basket. Don't know about that one. Looked like a charge to me. It will be called a block. Yeah, he, he came up with the blocking signal right away. But, you know, uh, it's, it's a tough call. We saw one very similar to that one go the Panthers' way earlier as Hill steps to the free throw line for his first. You know, in this kind of game, it doesn't really matter if it's a good or bad call, but when we get into postseason play, that would be an important call, and uh, those need to be done and made right. We talk about this being a good night for the Panthers to, to work on new things, getting new players in there. It's also a good time for the referees to work on their game a little bit as Hill hits his second free throw. The Panthers are in the lead 36-19 to with 6.50 left in the ball game. Henderson just crossing half court. Finds Hines. Hines over to Welty to Henderson. Hines cutting to the basket. Good defense there by Hill. Henderson with the ball in the corner. Brings it back up top to Meek. Over in the other corner to Welty. Looking inside. Appeared an Indian hit the, hit the deck. Welty inside to Hines. Good finish there. Good pass inside by Ryan Welty. And a good finish there by Evan Hines. Well, they kind of got away from Hines in the, in the uh, first, towards the end of the first half there. And, 
Um, it's one thing that I would be doing all night is dishing it into him, but you also want to see a, a number 23, Robert Lane, involved as well. Hines is the Panthers' leading scorer. He also leads the team in blocks, as you saw there. Good effort there by Meek. Gets it in the hands of Hill. Hill bringing the ball down the floor. Has it just outside the three-point line over to Gray. Panthers are in their 2-3 zone. As a coach, you you know, you you want to keep your players in this game mentally, and it's hard to do. Good hands there by Henderson, able to disrupt the pass and get a steal. A foul is called. I believe that was on Hill. That's his second team first for this half. A timeout is called. And as they take a break, I think we're going to take a break too. Here's a word from a few of our sponsors. You're watching 810 WHB TV. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. And we're back at Park Hill South High School. You're watching 810 WHB. TV. I'm Schaefer Schutz. I'll be doing play-by-play. -play. Joined by Jim Bly is doing color. He's directing. He's working the cameras as Hudson Welty gets an easy two there. Increasing the Panthers lead 40 to 19 with 523 left in the third quarter. Got to, I've got to say, uh, Schaefer, great ball movement tonight by the Panthers. Just uh, working it around the horn, inside out. And uh, it's, you know, it's even even though their their, their opponent, opponent doesn't have the size to really keep them out of uh, the inside down low, they're they're really really working hard on their fundamental uh, fundamentals of passing tonight. We have seen a lot of very very good unselfish basketball tonight from the Panthers. I mentioned earlier when I was going through the the leading scores, the leading scores are. At halftime, we're at 7 8 6 6, spreading the ball around very well. Here's that press we were talking about. Henderson passes up to Meek. Meek's not able to hold on to it. St. Joe ends up with it. They and didn't, they they didn't out of bounds. They didn't really break the press that time. It was a, an errant pass on Park Hill South uh, there. So. It was a difficult pass to hang on to. Panthers were fortunately able to get their hands back on the ball after the turnover by the Indians. Indians are trying to trap Welty with the ball on the open floor. Hines well guarded by Fox. Ryan Welty ends up with the ball. Got a foot inside the paint. Henderson with the ball setting up a play. Here you see Welty coming through the elevator doors of Welty, the other Welty and Hines. Hines with the putback dunk. Did you see the tip by Meek? That was a tip pass. That was awesome. Uh, great teamwork there, as we were just talking about. An and one dunk, something you don't hear a whole lot of in <laughs> high school basketball. Great job there by Hines. Robert Lane checking into the ball game for the little Welty, Ryan. The not so little little Welty, 6'6", sophomore. Hines is at the free throw line. Very good free throw shooter. We mentioned that earlier. Hits his free throw to complete the three-point play after the and one dunk. Gray bringing the ball down the floor for the Indians. Riddle with the ball now. Has a, have you heard if anybody's been looking at Evan Hines college-wise since he is a senior? You know, I, I am for sure that he will play college ball somewhere. I haven't heard what, what school yet. Well, I'm not for sure if he is um, set on one in particular, but he has made it known to me that he will be playing college ball somewhere. I know he wants to very badly. I am not for sure on what school yet, though, however. Henderson with the ball. 6'6", six, six, unless he goes to a smaller school, will probably be playing a strong guard. Hines is shooting. 
50% from behind the arc. Now with that being said, he has only shot four threes, but he's made two of them. <laughs> so big man does have a little bit of range. I don't know how much of a uh, ball handler he is, but he can shoot from the outside. We see him hit quite a few mid-range jumpers. And very good touch inside. As he subs out, Allen Hyatt subs in for him. Indians with the ball under their own basket. Deep pass. They do get the ball inside the paint, something we haven't seen a whole lot of. Gray for three from the corner. Robert tipping it out to Henderson. Out to Meek for an easy two. That does increase the Panthers' lead. The score is 47 to 19 with 3.22 left in the third quarter. A timeout was called, and I think we're going to take a timeout as well. You're watching 810 WHB TV. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Welcome back to Park Hill South High School. You're watching 810 WHB TV where the Panthers are leading 47 to 19 with 320 left in the third quarter. The St. Joe Central Indians not having a whole lot of luck this evening. Panthers are in that 2-3 zone that we see so much of. Indians having a tough time penetrating the zone. Panthers have gone into a man a little bit. Haven't seen a whole lot of it. Panthers get a turnover, Colter Flatter ends up with it, finds Henderson moving down the middle of the floor. Henderson to Welty in the corner, finds Lane. Over to Colter Flatter to Hyatt to Henderson. Lane ends up with it inside. Great ball movement by the Panthers, moving it very quickly. Henderson ends up with the ball. Looking inside, Hyatt to Hudson Welty for three. Hudson, a very good outside shooter, has struggled this year. Um, from behind the arc, who traditionally is a very good shooter. There we see Hill for the Indians hitting three, hitting a three. Cult of Flatter moving the ball down the floor, picks it up, finds Henderson. Lane inside to his buddy Allen. Couldn't quite hold on to it, tried to catch it one-handed. Indians on the move. Good move to get inside the paint. Can't finish. Floater didn't go. Henderson. To Welty, across court to Cultiflider, finds Lane inside the paint. I think he's thinking too much. I don't think he's reacting. It looks like he's trying to guide the ball in the hoop a little bit. Maybe he is just trying a little too too hard. You know, that's the one thing bigger bodies guys have a hard time with is having a soft touch. Oh, here we see Hill take out a couple players on his own bench as he's going for a loose ball. Good hustle though, that's what you want to see. I mean, a minute 35 left in the third quarter, 47-22, you guys are still playing for you. Definitely something that, you know. Very good hustle, I definitely like to see that in a ball game like this. They are pressing, Panthers having a tough time breaking the press, here they get it across half court, Hyatt to Lane with a dunk. That is Robert Lane's first dunk of the year as you hear the rage cage erupt for him. Well, if it doesn't go in off the back of the glass, just put her on down. <laughs> <laughs> we did mention Robert having a tough time getting things to fall, having, getting a few tough bounces off the rim. Well, I think he found a solution for that problem Yeah, as he know. gets called for a foul in the corner. He, uh, he definitely, uh, I guarantee you, the next one he puts in off the boards will fall. He's got a little confidence rolling in him now. He is getting subbed out. Evan Hines coming in for him. Not bad for a 6'4 guy. He put that down hard with some guys on him. A wide 6'4 guy. He's got a little bit of weight to him as well. Able to get up there. Very impressive. Which takes a little bit of your height away. 
St. Joe Central gets the ball in the paint for a jumper. Doesn't hit it, the Panthers moving the ball down the floor. Henderson over to Hines to Cultiflider. Looking inside, doesn't like what he sees. Ryan Welty with a strong move to the basket. He gets it to fall, but a charge is called. First yeah. one we've seen tonight. Rage Cage, not happy. Good move there by the sophomore, Ryan Welty. Got the shot to fall with contact. But the Indians were able to get there first as we see the charges called. Coach Zeke isn't happy about it either. The Panthers have gone into a man defense. That is a three point shot from Riddle. That decreases the Panthers' lead. The Panthers, oh, there's a backcourt. The Panthers are in the lead 49 to 25 with 20.4 left in the third quarter. Indians will regain control of the ball. Cultiflider applying a little bit of pressure. They try to trap him. It's not going to work. The Indians able to get free. Riddle tries another three from the same spot. Doesn't hit this one. Bad bounce off the rim back out to the Indians. Set back up. Run their offense again and then the uh, Drain one. Able to hit that one. That is what they're going to have to do if they hope to get anywhere close. They have cut into this lead a little bit, so uh, it's just going to be hard to catch up. We're, uh, but if we're going to go ahead and take a break here right before we start the final and last quarter in this game. Uh, it's 49-28. We'll be right back after these words. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB TV at PVSKC.com. PVSKC.com. Just like your hometown team, City Rental Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169. City Rental Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. Welcome back to Park Hill South High School, where your Panthers are hosting the Indians of St. Joe Central. The Panthers are in the lead, 49-28, just at the start of the fourth quarter, as we see Kyle Fox for the Indians with a quick two. The Indians are pressing, trying to get back into this ball game. It's going to take a little bit for them to be able to make up the difference in score right now. We mentioned earlier the Indians need to do a better job of staying out of foul trouble. They have done a better job of that. The foul stand 4-4 four to four compared to the 9-3, to three, I believe, that was the first half. There we see the Panthers getting an easy two as they settle back into their 2-3 zone. Well, they did get it down to a 19-point lead, and then Park Hill South uh, comes back and gets two. Evan Hines with a good, strong board there. Meek with a long pass to Welty, who's not able to finish. Gray gets the rebound. He's moving down the floor. Well, we had the trifecta in dunks tonight. Three guys on Park Hill South get, team getting dunks. It's possible. Hat trick, maybe. You can see some hats going out on the... Court. We got Hines with one. Roberts got one. Welty definitely can dunk. Both Welty brothers. Hyatt can throw down. Meek, I know, can. Throw down. High-tech word there, Mr. Shoots. <laughs> you told me you finally threw one down with a I men's did. basketball. And you're only six foot. First time in the uh, in the fall I was able to do that before my, my end. Oh! Meek. Was, no, that was uh, 
Hyatt, Hyatt. Allen Hyatt goes down hard. Almost saw him flip over the back of Kyle Fox. Good hustle, though. But you don't want to see your one of your star players get hurt in a, in a ball this, game like in, this. Yeah. I would expect to see some other guys coming in for the Panthers sometime soon. Indians able to get the ball inside. They get it back out. Gray for three. Andrano. That was a that was a line drive, but he's able to get it to fall. Good shot there by Gray. 6:29 left here. Uh, timeouts called on the court. Uh, I don't know who called it, but somebody needed it. The score does stand 52-33. The Panthers are in the lead. It has been this way the entire game. It's been a tough game, tough night for the Indians of St. Joe Central. It appears everything has gone the way of the Panthers so far. We have seen a little bit of a spark here in the last couple minutes from the Indians. Some pretty good outside shooting. We'll see if they can keep that up with 6.29 left in the ball game. It'll take some pretty spectacular shooting and some very good defense to get back in this one. Crazier things have happened. Well, we've got three ball games this week, and it's showing in the stands. Uh, <laughs> If, uh, if, if you folks out there are watching tonight above the scoreboard, it's not very crowded over there on the other side of the court. But uh, like we said, it's Monday, and there's three games tonight, and plus KU and K-State's playing tonight as well. So I, that might have some factor in this, uh, this crowd. I would expect to see this gym filled to the brim this Friday for the inter-district ball game between Park Hill and Park Hill South. And I believe JV's playing that night as well, aren't they? In they the other gym? Yep, because the girls will be playing. Uh, the varsity and JV girls will be playing as well. Maybe we should uh, a bit of a double header. Give up our day job here and go out and charge ten dollars for parking, yeah. or, or maybe <laughs> twenty-seven, like they think twenty or seven or thirty. I think they get it airway. Airway, yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Meek with the ball, slowly bringing it up, crosses half court. Are the times still the same tomorrow? I believe they are, yes. The girls will be playing at 5.30, and the boys' game starts at 7. What was that call? Was it a charge? Yep. It was a charge. charge. That's I Hyatt's second foul. Fifth, sixth team, excuse me. Uh, maybe the coach for the Indians has been over there working the sidelines and finally bought something. <laughs> it's a... Uh, but that's why coaches talk to referees, to hope to get the next call, and I understand that. Everybody's human, right? Yes. Indeed, and the Indians with the ball just outside the arc. Trying to find something, trying to find a spark as Gray takes a three. He goes down after the fact. Welty passing it up to his brother, bringing it down the far side of the court. They pull up. Meek well, running the point for the Panthers. We see Henderson getting ready to check back into the ball game. That's where Meek started uh, the season. Point guard. He did. Ryan Welty there with an easy two. Meek started the season at the one. I believe it helped his game tremendously. He never played the one before. He's always been a two. A very good set shooter. Playing the one, I believe, helped his ball handling as well as his passing abilities. As we see Hines getting fouled there. He'll be heading to the line. Also, uh, Lane trying to grab it and put it back in. Got a little piece of the rim there. and He got his first dunk. He's wanting another one. He got a little excited after that first one. I think he got a little probably upset with himself and tried to change the momentum a little bit there. Hines hitting his first free throw. I don't think he's missed one tonight. He's Yeah, he's, he's somebody you definitely a coach's dream. Somebody that can go, a, you know, a, about a thousand at the three throw line there. And we jinxed him. Robert Lane gets the rebound, puts it up. <laughs> Robert Lane doesn't make it, but Hines says, you know what? I know I missed the free throw. I'm sorry, guys. How about I put it back with a, with a nice slam? The Rage Cage sure appreciated that one as they erupted after the fact. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of schools out there that 
as fans, they don't get to see that exciting above the rim play of Meek. Or me, I mean, uh, Welty. Oh, golly, I'm tongue tied here. Take it over for me there, Shoots. <laughs> I think we know what you mean. Evan Hines there with that dunk. Meek and Welty both able to dunk, however. Boy, they're calling it awful tight down there on the second, in the second uh, half. Panthers called for, I believe, uh, someone hooking around on their way to the basket. Indians will get the ball. Doesn't appear it's going to make too much of a difference in this one with only 4.50 left. The Panthers are in the lead, 57-33. Henderson still playing hard, putting pressure on number four. That is Tanner Curtin. Indians still trying to figure out this defense. Henderson with a good steal there. He's moving down the floor. He's going to pull it up, trying to set something up. Welty finds Lane inside the lane. He steps out. Here Hines, it is. Hines. Number. Oh, got it. It went in. It's still a slam. Yeah, is that I, three or four? I'd still count it. Is that so three or four for him I think tonight. that's his third. Well, he got his own hat trick, I guess. <laughs> he heard me talking. Good defensive there. Good defensive play there by the Panthers. Here we see some of those guys. Andy Lee checking into the ball game as well as Grant Brady. Haven't seen them yet this evening. Some of the future of uh, Park Hill South Panthers here. Well, Andy and Grant are both seniors. They've been in the program all four years. Both very good players, but haven't got to see as much playing time as they would like, and I know as much as Coach Zeke would like. Gray taking a shot inside the three-point line, just barely high it with the rebound. Finds Henderson. Hyatt didn't even have to jump for that rebound. He just reached <laughs> over his defender and grabbed it. Colt fighter from for three from the corner, not able to hit, gets the front of the iron. Fox with the rebound for the Indians. Sending it down to Gray. Makes a strong move to the basket. Rejected by Colt fighter. Great block there. As the rage cage erupts. Colt fighter to Hyatt. Over to Brady. Brady to Henderson to Colt the Flyer. Hyatt finds Colt the Flyer inside, not able to hold on to it. He gets fouled, though. I believe that foul was on number 30, Zach Olson. Colt the Flyer will be headed to the to the line. Well, uh, Panthers now have eight fouls on him. Indians have six, so kind of the tides turned a little bit there in the foul category from the second half. That's number four on number 30, though. Oh, um, he's going to stay Zach, in the game. Is that uh, Zach Olson? That is Zach Olson has his fourth foul. He's yeah. going to go ahead and stay in. As Hyatt gets the rebound. I think at this point it really doesn't matter. Hyatt over to Lee. To Henderson. Looking inside. Good defense there by Hill. Able to deny that one. Coach Zeke not liking the pass from Henderson. Little uh, alley oop throw in inbounds play here, maybe. <laughs> Cap the night off. I hope they'll take it back out and work it around. Henderson looking inside to Colt the Flutter. Good cut there, good finish, good pass. All around good offensive play there for the Panthers as the Indians bring the ball back down the floor, trying to get a good offensive play of their own. Back over that 60 mark again tonight. Henderson. Very aggressive play there. He, that should not have been, that should not have happened right there. I think uh, you can't go out of bounds and be the first one to touch it on your way back in. The ref didn't see it. Henderson was able to capitalize on it. And uh, he made the made the layup, got fouled, he's headed to the line. This may be our most uh, re-watched game this year, Schaefer, with all these slam dunks and <laughs> alley-ooping and It'll be one for the highlight reel for sure. St. Joe Central able to capitalize on the missed free throw from Henderson. As they're trying to figure out something with 150 left in the ball game, the Panthers are up by 30. The score stands 63 to 33. The 
clock does continue to run here at Park Hill South as Jackson Riddle shoots free throws for the Indians. E Easton uh, Fortuna, is that how you pronounce that? Yes. Yep. That was his first foul of the night. That was on Fortuna? That's what they have on the board up there. Huh. Well, that must be incorrect. Fortuna actually just had to get his appendix removed. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have a scoreboard error up there. Definitely our thoughts and prayers going out to his family. I'll quit reading the lineup list then. <laughs> Grant Brady with the rebound. Finds Henderson on the sideline. Henderson over to Kaltaflyter. Kaltaflyter into Henderson. Into Lee. He gets blocked. Haven't seen much rejection in this, this evening. The rage cage would have erupted for that one. Andy Lee definitely a very well-liked student here at Park Hill South amongst the student body. Riddle gets a piece of the bottom of the net on that one. I think the Rage Cage has got to chant about every chant in basketball lingo tonight. <laughs> Brady gets the ball inside the hide. He steps back, showing a little bit of finesse there from the big guy. 67-34 with 27 seconds left in the ball game. Riddle bringing the ball down the floor for the Indians. It's about a three-pointer, wasn't it? Pretty close. It to was it. close. Yeah. Henderson able to get his hand on that pass. Lee standing in there. That could have been Doesn't a charge, a too. I personally thought it was. The ref well, saw something different. Alan Hyatt kind of came down hard on him, so that drew more attention. Plus, it's 67-34. Looks like Lee might have lost a, uh, a contact as time runs out. The Panthers did win 67-34. Well, uh, our second show uh, our second broadcast our first coaches show you lost part of a tooth I did those, that chips, was, uh, those chips are dangerous at, uh, <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at Rancho Grande it was uh, you know that that tooth's been it's been glued on there for the, for the last couple of years and got a couple of those chips knocked it right off well, well, good thing it happened after the coaches show. Right. No. Well, you know, hey. So I wasn't uh, having a hard time talking. I think you would have had a harder time given the next day at school. <laughs> <laughs> the toothless wonder. Yeah. Um, Schaefer, let's go ahead and take a break, get some stats, come back, and uh, we'll go over stats, and then hopefully coach will come up and talk to us a little bit. Sounds like a plan. We'll be back in a few minutes on A10WHBTV.com. Ulcerous fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service. We're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings Team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810WHB-TV at pbskc.com. pbskc.com.
Just like your hometown team, City Rental Truck has been your hometown truck rental headquarters since 1964. Locally owned with two convenient locations in Kansas City and the new store in Olathe. South of I-35 and 151st on Highway 169, City Rental Truck has everything you need from pickups, cargo vans, passenger vans, flatbeds, and box trucks. Give them a call at 816-561-8700 in Kansas City, 913-839-1755 in Olathe, or online at cityrentatruck.com. All service, fire or water damage will help you navigate the insurance issues and get your home back in shape in no time. Locally owned and available 24-7, call 816-786-8080 or go online to firewaterhelp.com. All service, we're here for you. Dr. Billings and his braces by Billings team have been making people of all ages smile for over 30 years. Dr. Billings makes it a point to treat every patient as one of his own family members, giving them quality care and time that they need to complete their orthodontic treatment. Braces by Billings, serving the Northland on the corner of Highway 9 and Tom Watson Parkway in Parkville and in Platte City. Welcome back to a now empty Park Hill South High School basketball gym. After the matchup between the Park Hill South Panthers and the Indians of St. Joe Central, the Panthers did come out victorious, 67 to 34. Leading scores for the Panthers, Evan well, Hines leading the charge with 13. Three of those being dunks. Yeah, I was getting ready to say we had virtual every way of scoring tonight: outside, inside, dunking, almost an alley oop. Definitely a very entertaining ball game this evening. Welty and Robert, both with 12, not too far behind. We mentioned earlier the Panthers doing a very good job of spreading the ball out, getting a lot of touches. As we see there, the top three scores all around the same, 13, 12, 12. We had Ryan Welty with 8, Peyton Meek with 9. Very good job playing unselfish basketball here at Park Hill South High School. As the Panthers increase their record, to 14 and 4. They will be playing Truman tomorrow, who they beat in the North Kansas City tournament not too long ago. And then, not too late after that, this Friday, the Panthers will be hosting the Trojans of Park Hill, hoping to get a little bit of revenge here at Park Hill South High School. The Panthers did beat them on their home floor over there at Park Hill on the was, other side of the district. And that was early in the season as well. That was after the North Kansas City tournament. Yep. So. You know, it, things have d definitely turned tides for, for this Panthers team, as we've seen tonight, and uh, their dominance and their, the, pass, the crisp passing, a uh, very fluent offense. Uh, defense was very good in the zone as well. Uh, looks like we're going to go ahead and take a break and uh, go to a commercial, and then we'll come back with uh, Coach Rick Zeke. Northland Racquet Club, located in North Kansas City, offers tennis programs designed by certified USTA professionals for all ages and levels. They also feature an on-site workout area and children's playroom. Mention this ad and receive a free evaluation of your game. Come join the fun. Whatever you require for audio, video, and broadcast solutions, it's Professional Video Supply. PVS is a leading supplier and integrator of pro video and audio gear for the Midwest. For the boardroom, worship, production houses, medical facilities, TV stations, and sports networks, PVS has it. Canon, Sony, Yamaha, Sharp, and hundreds of others. From a single camera or touchscreen display to an entire TV studio, remember Professional Video Supply, the official video source for 810 WHB-TV at PBSKC.com. PBSK